I have with me today uh, Rob Messenger, MP in the Queensland State Parliament, independent MP, who's come to the No Carbon Tax, no carbon tax Rally today. Rob, would you like to tell uh, our YouTube watchers some, some of your thoughts on the carbon tax? Well, there's always a lot of confusion around the carbon tax. Um, and the best way I can describe a carbon tax is like this. Julia Gillard, her mates, and a whole bunch of bureaucrats that are hanging off her are saying this. If you pay me more money in taxes, and I'll stop the world's climate from changing. That's as simple as it gets. On page 74 of The Economist, in the February issue, there's a guy called Robert Paisen. And he's the leader of the Carnegie Institute into the Deep Carbon Observatory. And he indicated that carbon is the most abundant element in the universe behind helium, hydrogen and oxygen. And I just want to know when they're going to start taxing helium, hydrogen and oxygen. Because it's nothing more than a tax. What most people don't understand that carbon, uh, that the, the average world temperature is around 14 degrees. Up there in that um, chamber, I asked the climate change minister um, what the average world temperature is, because everyone's fighting over what the average world temperature is. Now, even Tim Flannery in his book says it's 14 degrees. I thought, when else was it 14 degrees? Can you go back 110,000 years, according to Al Gore, it went from 14 degrees to about 19 degrees, and then back down again, bounced around. And about 15, 20,000 years again, it rose to 14 degrees. Well, of course, to rise from 14 degrees to 19 degrees 110,000 years ago, it wasn't man made carbon. And these are one of the things that um, people don't understand. Julia Gillard, by saying to people, You give me more money in taxes and I'll stop the climate from changing, is like um, the only other people who've done that are the Incans in South America who said to their followers, we just have to throw another virgin into the volcano and we'll keep that sun coming up. That's where it is. What, uh, what do you think, uh, Rob, that uh, Gillard intends to do with this tax money? What allocations she made of it to go to the United Nations? Hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars um, as compensation. The reality is the five greatest nations in the world, economic, America, China, Brazil, Japan, um, India, they've all said no to a carbon tax. Obama said no to a carbon tax. So we've got our farmers competing against paying a carbon tax while the American farmers don't. We'll have our manufacturers uh, paying a carbon tax while Chinese manufacturers don't. The reality is, as everyone knows, it's a stealth job-killing tax. Can you see a way, uh, Rob Messenger, that Gillard can be stopped from bringing this legislation forward without a member? Yes. The weakest link in this chain is Rob Oakeshott and Tony Windsor. Rob Oakeshott has given independent politicians a bad name. Oakeshott is a traitor. In fact, anyone who advocates for a carbon tax is either very confused or just plain out traitors because what it will do, it will destroy our country. And Rob, do you think uh, that the people in uh, Oakeshott's electorate and in Windsor's electorate are justified in feeling betrayed in that they voted for a non-Labor government, a non-Labor attitude with a non-Labor vote? Do you think they're right to feel betrayed that uh, both their members of parliament have chosen to help a Labor government for a minority government? Absolutely. Um, as an independent member of parliament, you have an opportunity to represent the will of your people. That's what you're there for. You don't jump when a, a, a millionaire's club in, in Canberra or Brisbane say, uh, uh, jump and ask how high. What you're there to do is to represent the will of the people in your electorate. And Oakshot and Windsor are not representing the will of their people. They have betrayed their people that put them there. And they should go and join the Greens. What do you think about the proposition that any news commentator who does not advocate an election for legislation on carbon tax, what, do you think, what would you say to a commentator such as that? Well, I think there's a lot of news commentators. Um, well, first of all, Julia Gillard-Lyne. Uh, and, and 
that there's no hiding that fact. Um, and for the news commentators, I think there's a lot of news commentators who are either uh, confused, very, very confused, or don't understand just how how much of a threat the carbon tax is to the, to Australia and to our jobs, to workers' jobs, to our competitiveness in the world. What what could happen? What could happen? We could go and stop all 21st century living, stop producing all the carbon. We could go and dress in animal skins, live in caves, burn candles. And the world's climate is going to keep changing. The world's climate has been much, much hotter, much, much colder. And a carbon tax is it's like this. I can go down to my favourite fishing spot with a backpack full of $100 bills at low tide. And as that tide starts coming in, I can reach in and start tearing up $100 bills and saying, please don't come in, please don't come in. That's what a carbon tax is. And, um, and what we're going to do is just waste a whole lot of money. It'll be a paper shuffling exercise. The only way that a community, state and, and country can G'day. grow and prosper, you can either make it, mine it, grow G'day. it, or show it. G'day, good to see you again, how are you? Would you like it? what a carbon tax will do is yeah, stifle every the primary month, month create you know, a you know, dollar in Australia. Do you think that's part of their agenda, agenda to destroy Australia? It must be. It must be. Must be. Thank you very much, Rob Messenger, MP, independent MP.